Okay, great. So I want to talk about dance and music, but before that, I, 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 I would like to know where you grew up. Uh, Calumet City, Illinois, uh, South Suburbs. Yeah, Markham, Illinois, South Suburbs. One away to Hoxie, actually. But, um, what kind of environment was that? Uh, just like any old typical neighborhood in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, you know, the poverty, the crime, the good side, the bad, bad side. side. Oh, it's home. We love it. And which was your first musical emotion? I'll take it back to Cashmere, the Percolator. That's like the number one song that got me into house music, period. Like the Percolator. Just go crazy for the parking lot. <laughs> and I can take it back further than that. Michael Jackson and all the 80s bands back in the day when I was a little kid when MTV was official before BET. It was MTV. It was MTV. And that's all I knew. I'm an 80s baby. What can I say? Uh, rock, jazz, blues, soul, um, old school house, techno, drum and bass. It, everything inspires us, music in general. How did you, um, what was your first relation to uh, dance? Hmm. Michael Jackson. Thriller. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> like dancing at home or going to clubs? Well. Or dancing in the streets? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, we were kids, so. Been dancing the club at uh we used eight. to sneak <laughs> in the club back in the day it was called jubilations are you trying to tell people y'all know what jubilation is it was at harvey we were like in fifth sixth grade sneaking into teenage clubs just to go dance it was like day. a 17 and up and we we're sneaking in like 13 14 years old so um i've always been influenced by music and i always love music and dancing and anything in that curriculum program, I would say. Yeah, same here. I heard you were dancers because before you became DJs. That's not true. Um, I was dancing just as long as I was DJing, and so was him. Or uh, should I say so was he. <laughs> um, in Chicago period, like, from when we grew up, it was either dancing, basketball, Gang or gang banging or all the above. I chose all three of them. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Young and dumb, whatever. It is what it is. Don't judge. But um, music is my life. I love music. Um, it's been a part of my life since I was a young kid. That's all I heard. My parents play nothing but music, you know. Um, so. Music was always a part of my life. What about you? Always. Like, parents, uh, family, everybody always played music. We watched movies, Breaking, Michael Jackson, James Brown. So, music was just something that came along with the territory. My dad used to DJ, and I didn't even know that until I got grown, and I carried it on. What was your vision of the DJ? My vision of a DJ, I, I take it back to the movie Juice. If y'all don't know about Juice, it's a 1992 movie. It had a guy in it named Oh My Epsi was the star. Uh, Q was his name, DJ Q. Everybody wanted to be DJ Q on the ones and twos. And like that movie like really pushed a DJ culture. Like if they didn't know it, it did. You know, it really was one of them things that made DJing seem cool. Not but really. Beside I have to breaking. disagree because the shit was phony. Um, come to find out, we looked up to yeah, the guy, later. Q, Omar Epps, <laughs> it was fake and it really wasn't what it really was supposed to be. And we learned the hard way by trying to be something that it isn't, but it is what it is. <laughs> oh shit. And what were your parents doing, Russia? My parents? Mm -hmm. um, my father owned a tavern called uh, Diamond Gems. Uh, and Foremost Liquors, I don't know if you heard of Foremost Liquors, but it's a U.S. liquor store in Chicago. Um, not too many left, but uh, my family was into the liquor and tavern business. 
and at night they would throw parties and I would sneak in my cousins and shit and party and that's how I got introduced to the whole rhythm and blues slash house slash rap hip hop shit. What was the first time you DJ? My first time was in sixth grade uh, at that club I was telling you about Jubilations. Uh, it was my first debut and uh, I guess because I was so I don't know, so I had so much passion, they gave me a shot. They said, if you can work the crowd, we'll let you come back next week. And you know, being a sixth grader, that's real big, you know. Um, so I can't say I worked the crowd, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, I don't know if I was the best or the worst, but I definitely wasn't the greatest at that time, but they gave me a chance. And, uh, and what was your strategy? Well, I didn't know the strategy back then. Um, all I wanted to do was have the girls dance. If the girls was dancing, I was happy. You know, so that was my strategy, even though that's not the strategy. Or maybe it is. The game is to be sold, I told you. Tell you what. <laughs> and what did you do to make the girls dance? <laughs> I would try to play the most popular songs that uh, was out at the time. Um, anything that was familiar, pop house, uh, rap, at that time hip hop, um, I would just try to please the crowd and that's what I think DJing is all about if I'm not mistaken. Your purpose is to please the crowd and not please yourself like some DJs out there. What was your first time speaking? Officially, uh, it was like 15, uh, Cavallini's, a uh, spot called Cavallini's in Harvey. Uh, me, Rashad, uh, Clint, R.P. Boo, uh, we used to make tracks and all that type of stuff. And like my first Don't real, e real uh, party, you know. Magic Mike. Oh, I take it back. Jim and Gerald. Margaret Roller Ring. Fake Chip. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the skating ring is like where a lot of guys started. And I can't forget about it. the skating ring. Word. And there's a lot of concurrence. Like uh, it's it's hard to make its uh, its its own place in the DJing world, no? So, what what was your strategy to, to be there? And, and well, the strategy pretty much was dance, get in a dance group, get with a popular dance group, and, and get then the girls. Yeah, we that's get the what girls. it was all about for us. Uh, we just wanted girls, <laughs> you know. Uh, that was it back in the day. Um, that's. That's what it was all about. Today, I don't know, but when we were in it, that's what it comes. <laughs> and let's talk about today, because um, um, your music is related to this culture of footwork, right? What, right. what is footwork? Well, footworking is a dance uh, that derives from ghetto house music. Pretty much, uh, it's just a fast motion of the feet that goes to the beat of the music that we make. Um, which is from 145 to 160 beats per minute. So, uh, how does it change the way you play? Oh man, well, it changed uh, over time. In the 90s, it was a lot slower. And then uh, during the late 90s, the dancing started getting a little faster, so the music got faster. So, we sped up the music with the dancing. And us being dancers, um going to various places like the West Side, shout out to Tracks Red, Bobby Skills, um, all them guys were at yeah, Club Xavier, the and they were playing this shit faster than the South Side. The South Side was going to slower, but the West Side was like 45 beat, right? Yeah, like, and at like you got a 33 record, right? That's like the regular speed. They put it on 45 and speed it up. And uh, to compete for the girls. <laughs> Uh, we had to dance to that kind of music, and we liked it, and uh, we embraced it. So uh, I can't say me myself is a, a change of the game, but I can say me, RP Boo, DJ Clint, Magic Mike, original B-Down members, even Solo, uh, we pretty much took it from 130 to 160. So. And before footwork, what were the codes? What what was the, uh, 
dancing style. It was like hip hop animation. Dance. They had animation. Um, like it really, like it's more complex today versus back in the day. You have just a regular movie. Everybody knew like one, two, three type thing. And now um, today, the dancers are. I can't say they're more creative, but uh, it's more complicated than. Yeah. Everybody could do it back in the day due to it being slower and uh, just simple. Now it's more technical and shit. You got uh, ghosts, Urk and Jerks, combos, Dribbles, all type of different names. Skates. Dance moves back in the day it was just like the mop and glow and that yeah. was it. You know? Maybe the Roger <laughs> Rabbit or something. Or something like in that. Running Man or something. MC Hammer. But, and how yeah. do you explain this uh, complexification? Why do people need to go faster? I can't say that they needed to get faster. It was just like uh, the trend at the time. Um, slow, you can definitely see the moves better. Better slow. slow. But on the creative tip, when we was doing it, uh, we was on some next level shit. Can I cuss? I'm sorry, y'all might have to edit. Sorry, um, yeah, right, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Like we just wanted to be like the eyeballs out of the, the new generation and uh, take it to the next level, wherever it be weirdness, music, like offbeat shit. We just wanted to be them guys that made it a new style, a different style, a different style, and not under the same people that came before us. So, what difference did you bring? Oh, we do more halftime. So, I mean, it was for us <laughs> and then the other dancers. So, we did what we did for us to, you know, as far as what we did in our crew and, and, and keep our moves sharp and keep on the game. And then, like, you know, we can't speak for everybody else, but everybody else picked up on the, on the style of, of faster dancing at the time. What are the movements that are typical of the of the footwork that you don't find in any other dances? Uh, I can't say that you can't find it in any other dance because uh, break dancing they have a, a sort of footwork. You got river dance that has a sort of footwork. It's a lot of dances around the world that has their own uh, yeah footwork. I mean it's just moving your feet. You know I mean to we can't beat, we, we can't claim that we started footwork as the word, but as far as what we do in Chicago, we definitely put a stamp on what we do in Chicago as footwork. And not just us, tracks where our people will be doing footwork. And uh, how are the parties in Chicago? Do, are you like a residence DJ in some places? Do you make like, like regular parties there? Well, pretty much uh, it was a spot called Battlegrounds that we did it's, it's still every, like every Sunday. And it, it, there's also uh, well, see, that's the thing. Um, when we were doing parties, it was more about parties. Now, today, it's strictly for footwork and footwork only. You know what I mean? Like, it's all dedicated straight for that. The parties that uh, that's going on today. Besides the regular parties that we do, we play more than just footwork, but that's just like our fucking specialty. Yeah, like, residencies, like, I mean, we can have them, but we never it's, around. it's not worth it. To be a resident <laughs> DJ in Chicago. No, it ain't. Everybody wants to be the cheap man to come to me. I'll do it for free type shit. Yeah. And y'all fucking the game up. Straight up. And where are the best dancers? Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> she want names. Who are the best dancers? I don't want to be like, I can't say who's the best, but right. my opinion, right. I would have to say, Legend Click. T.S., Wolfpack, Terror Squad is T.S., of course, uh, Taliban, Leaders of the New School, He Squad, Footwork Kings, Creation, everybody on the South and West Side is doing their thing. Phase 2 House of Maddox, everybody came like, now you fight you. Uh, shit, we can go on the name names, but uh, I can't say somebody's the best because that's my opinion. Right. To the next man, he could say, this guy's the best, you know, so I don't want to say because I love her. Pause. <laughs> what did you think of the what did you think of the dancers of today? 
Paris. <laughs> in Paris? In Paris? Uh, today, oh, that shit today, was in off. front of you. Oh, man. Oh, it was, um... I mean, I can't say they were footworking, but they were definitely vibing. Like, they were vibing to the music. My goal is just to have you moving. You don't have mm -hmm. to footwork. I mean, of course, everybody can't, but you can learn. Um, as long as you moving, it's cool. Like, that's our main goal is just to keep the people happy and uh, have a good time. Uh, as far as if you don't know how to move and do the dance, we don't judge. Uh, as long as you're having a good time when you rock with the kids, it's tech life. Yeah. What about the the video you made on on the lake with the wedding? Oh, uh, space Jew? Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't make that video. Uh, one of our guys did, but uh, yeah. Shout out to John Sands. John that. Sands, you know, man. That was a great Thank video. You. Uh, that was his creation, and yeah. we just let him run yeah. with his own imagination and do what he does. And uh, I, I liked it. Uh, it was kind of maybe some people thought it might have yeah, been weird. There's a lot of mixed reviews about it because people want to see authentic footwork. They don't want to see stop motion or pictures. But uh, it was a great representation of just being abstract with the art of footwork. What's going to be next, you think, after footwork? What's going to be the, the next dancing style? We don't know. Uh, yeah, we, we've seen it all from around the world. So uh, I guess it's our time to shine as far as Chicago goes because... I mean, just coming from Chicago, we all grew up to house music. And if you can't dance to house music, it's like, what other music are you dancing to? Like, for real, it's like, if you can't dance to house music, what other music can you dance to? So, like, the footworkers are definitely, like, the elite of dancing. And